You're gonna be just fine. I just talk, you know, I just talk. Listen to them. Children of the night. Sick transit, Gloria. Thrill me. Hello everyone, welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry, and joining me as always is the ever-quotable Jay. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. A widespread investigation of funeral homes, morgues, and hospitals has concluded that the unburied dead have been returning to life, seeking human victims. It's hard for us here to be reporting this to you, but it does seem to be fact. Wow. I, you know, I was kind of wondering if you were going to remember to bring a quote to the show or not. Uh, yeah, I remember this morning. There we go. And we have two guests today because we have no Kenneth and to replace Kenneth. I need two people. So we have Mr. Venom. Greetings and salutations, flesh eaters. And the wonderful Dave Parker. We doing quotes or no? Or is that just a That's Jay just a J thing. Yeah, Jay always Jay-mer. does a quote. Sorry, I call him Jay the Dead. Mixed you up. Two Js. Jay Merv, yeah. No, um, how's it going, guys? Ready to talk zombies. All right, so... With that being said, today we are starting the first episode of Roundtable of the Dead. And the way this show is going to go is I'm going to pick a topic. We are going to talk about our top fives of that topic. Then we are going to debate what is the most critically acclaimed of that topic, the most historically important of that topic, and the most entertaining of that topic. And our topic today is is going to be zombies. But before we do that, I always like to find out how everyone's been doing. So, Jay, how you been? Uh, work is a little stressful, but other than that, just doing my normal, watching movies, playing video games. Um, I uh, started playing Skyrim because I saw Dungeons & Dragons and wanted something fantasy-related, and that was the only thing I could think of. I, I mean, that's fair. It's not like people haven't been playing Skyrim for 30 years at this point. <laughs> I know, but I never, I liked Oblivion better, so I like tried to play it once, and I was like, eh, Skyrim's not for me, but. Well, that's fair. Here, 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 here we are. Uh, <laughs> it, it happens to the best of it, except me, I've never played Skyrim in my life. Venom, how you been? Um, I, it could be a lot better. I, I personally have been pretty well. Unfortunately, Mrs. Venom's father, who's nearing 80 years old, had a nasty spill last week, so she had to fly home. Uh, kind of on a whim. So unfortunately, I had to spend my birthday alone. Uh, my birthday was earlier this week. So, you know, played a lot of poker, bought a lot of Funko Pops, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, partook in other forms of debauchery as well. So, yeah, not yeah, bad. Yeah, a lot of lotion used, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of an essential oils guy, but okay. Ah, double the healing. You heard it here first. Uh, you will be getting a message from Venom soon to ask you if you would like to sell essential oils for him. Uh, <laughs> well, happy late birthday, Venom. As always, anyone whose name's Jerry and they had a birthday is my birthday is also. Uh, is also. What the fuck did I just say? Fair. Dave, how have you been? I've been doing good. Work, working out, same stuff, watching movies. We dived into 81 movies now. I'm already at 40 1981 horror movies. I go pretty quick. Probably didn't do like 160 again. So, uh, yeah. You are going to watch so much trash. Eh, I have a high level. <laughs> I like most movies, okay? I think the worst one I watched was, um, geez, what would I say so far? Uh, I know I just watched the turd. Faces of Death 2 is pretty crap. Faces of pretty Death crap. 2 should not be counted as a movie. Um, it, it's 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 a really broad documentary about death and half of it is an environmental movie and i was like what is going on? what the hell is even this <laughs> fun fun enough um about two months ago i sold my gorgon clamshell vhs release of faces of death 2 for 75 dollars Oh yeah, I good. remember you're trying to have a hard time selling that because like ebay kept telling you to fuck off right you can't sell it on ebay I like they literally when it was like four or five years ago when I tried to sell it on eBay and they literally called me on the phone and was like, hey, we took your listing down. You can't sell that on eBay. And I was like, what in the absolute fuck? I, why did eBay call me to tell me this? Um, to be honest, it's not that extreme. It's really kind of a lame documentary about death the second one because it's actually just like footage from like the news and shit yeah <laughs> like, and you're gonna watch a mondo documentary like watch one that actually says the word mondo mondo mm-hmm. county exactly um well as for me i have been playing octopath traveler 2 
put 120 hours into that and I think I'm finally done with it because I'm not going to try to beat that uh, last boss again. Fuck that shit. Um, it's brutal and I don't have the patience. Other than that, I have just been... Uh, I, wrote, I started writing a short, short story that I needed to put the ending on. Um, and I think once I finish it, I'm going to do like a small, like mini reading of it and put it out as a podcast episode. It'll be like 15 minutes long, if that. So I did that because I've been reading a lot of extreme horror books. Uh, with that being said, that is, that is it. We're all good. Um, and we're going to start now. So round table (laughs) of the dead. We chose zombies because obviously Round Table of the Dead is a play on Night of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead, blah, blah, blah. So, I chose zombies. So, what we are going to do first is we're going to start with our top five. Starting at number five, we are going to start with Jay. What is your fifth favorite zombie movie? Um, I just accidentally closed up my list, so give me a second. Way to go. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Uh, Pontypool is my fifth movie because wow, not enough people know about it, and it's really fun. Um, it's original in its uh, in its execution. Uh, it's original in its or- or origin for the for the zombies. Um, it's it's well acted. It's well shot. It's a great idea. It's just a great movie and. I think more people should watch it, so I threw it on my list. I agree. I, I think that Pontypool is probably one of the most original zombie movies I have ever seen. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty good, too. I mean, are we all talking about it? Yeah, um, go ahead. Or just, yeah. No, I mean, it's pretty original. It's smart that it uses, you know, an isolated place. I mean, it's a very small, but there's only like three or four actors in the major thing, but they're all just talking about the incidents and still manage to be scary. And the, the idea, it's like, it's so crazy. The thought of how the virus spreads or whatever, it's like a quater mass movie. It's like you spend 45 minutes just trying to get your head around it. And you know what I mean? It's, it's intelligent. Wow. Drop it. Yeah, I'm right there with quater uh, mass experiment reference. <laughs> yeah. I'm right there with Dave. The performances in that uh, movie are great. Uh, beautiful concepts. Uh, the use of language and how they kind of uh, mix it into the plot of the movie. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that one. Great performance by the lead as well. Perfect. Venom, what is your number five? My number five is also going to be a little bit off the cuff as well, but this is one that I just absolutely adore. It's To me, it's just one of the most glorious, fun horror movies or zombie movies out there. Um, maybe a little bit of a controversial pick, but my number five is going to be Wormwood, Road of the Dead, uh, coming to you out of New Zealand. Just a really, really fun movie, just with a lot of original concepts. Um, you know, the whole thing with the zombie's blood, the zombie's breath, the, fast, uh, the fact that they're faster and stronger at night. And then we even get some mad scientist action going on until ultimately you get a queen zombie if you will it just it 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 just rung so original to me that i absolutely adored it and this was kind of like uh, this was not in my top five at the beginning of the week but after my rewatches yeah i really had to put it in there i i adore this film you know i had a hard time watching that i've only tried to watch it once so i'm not gonna speak ill of the movie because i haven't even given it a real go but i just remember not being able to get into it so it sounds like something i i would love so i really should give it a a rewatch it's an odd movie. I mean, it definitely doesn't start, uh, you know, the, with the normal kind of uh, zombie tropes that we generally see. But it, it's definitely a story of like a brother and sister and their struggle getting through this zombie apocalypse. So for that, I definitely enjoyed it. I've never seen it, so it is on my list now to watch. I, I think it's a pretty good movie. It's been, I only saw it the one time when it came out, and I enjoyed it. Uh, the one guy, though, it cracks me up because uh, my friend, we were, we were done watching it. He pointed out, he's just like, how come that guy just basically all his dialogue is just repeating what's happening? He's like, there's a band here, huh? Yeah, there's a band. Let's have a band. <laughs> it's just like, what? But no, I, I wanted to watch the second one, but I, I didn't get a chance to. How's that one? Uh, the second one's not quite as good. And oh. honestly, I, I, 
I have issues with the second one because you have to see the first one. It, I, I'm not always a fan of sequels that kind of force you to watch the, the, the previous one. You should be able to watch a part two and three and get enjoyment out of it. But with the second Wormwood movie, uh, they don't even like repeat the rules. It's like expected that you know everything that's going on from the first movie. So if somebody were to watch Wormwood 2 first, they would be completely confused and probably think the movie was stupid as hell. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Dave, what is your number five? Uh, if, if anything, I am a traditionalist. So, and when I say this, I could have went off offbeat. I have dozens and dozens of zombie movies that are offbeat that I guarantee aren't going to appear in anyone's list that I love. But um, not only are zombie movies my favorite horror films, but they're also my favorite films. If you were to look at my top 20 favorite films of all time, I'm sure 10 of them would be zombie films. So I have real struggle with part five, with my number five here, and it was down to a couple titles. So I decided to go with Lucio Fulci's Zombie. Um, nice. Over over another one. I mean, it's I'm a huge Fulci fan, and uh, this one is amazing. From the Fabio Frizzi score to how they took the Dawn of the Dead kind of voodoo trope a little bit in there with the mentioning of it and ran with it. So it's kind of a mixture of like the kind of old school style of voodoo zombies with the cannibal, not cannibalistic, but flesh eating zombies, which is very unique. It has the great special effects by De Rossi. And it's just amazing. And the end scene's great. It's got Richard Johnson in it. It's got some some memorable people in it. Um, yeah, I know some people say it's a little talky, but I, I never minded it. And Fulci does um, set pieces and like showstoppers like nobody else. So yeah, I love it. Uh, unofficial sequel to Dawn of the Dead, Zombie 2, even though it works better as a prequel. <laughs> you know, I never thought about that. It would work better as a prequel. Mm -hmm, I need sure. to watch it now with that in mind. One of my favorite t-shirts I own is a zombie t-shirt. It's a picture of the uh, the zombie wrestling the shark. Oh, I have that one too. I have the I have a uh, the Jaws poster, except it's zombie as a shirt. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Fucking love it. Um, well, as for me, I'm actually kind of the opposite of Dave. I'm not a big zombie fan. Um, I, I just, I've, for some reason, a lot of them kind of, uh, there's a hierarchy in zombie movies to me where you have like these, you either make a really fucking good zombie film or you have a just kind of repetitive shitty movie that that's how I've always felt with zombie movies. But my number five is an absolute classic. Um, I would not be surprised to see it on everyone's list. And that is return of the living dead. Not only is it one of the best zombie films, it might be one of the best comedy horror movies. It, yeah. It's it's entertaining. It's fun. All the characters are fucking great. It's iconic at this point. It, it It's... I don't know if there's, like, anything you can say about it that hasn't been said a million times by a million people all over this fucking world. So, mine is Return of the Living Dead. That's also on my list at one point, so I just will try and save the little I have to say about it until then. That Return of the Living Dead was actually in my top five when I started my rewatches, and it actually slipped off slightly to my number seven. But yeah, I absolutely love this film as well. Works just as great as a horror movie as it does a comedy. It's pretty awesome. It just has endless rewatchability to me. Like, mm -hmm. it's one you can kind of just watch over and over again, whether you're watching it because you like gore or you like comedy or you like tits <laughs> it's it's my second or third favorite movie ever made so it's gonna be on the list <laughs> fair so venom you're the only one that doesn't have it on the list how does that make you feel uh like an intelligent human being oh wow <laughs> contrarian okay. contrarian right. speaking of intelligent human beings jay what's your number four Okay, so everyone did a little preface to the list, and I didn't do that. So now I'm going to do it before I say my number four. Uh, Night of the Living Dead, the original, is not going to be on my list. I have the most deepest and utmost respect for it. Um, it completely changed the the way that zombie movies were made, that horror movies were made, um, and broke all kinds of awesome barriers. Uh, but everybody knows about it, and I just feel like it's it's almost pointless to include in the top five list uh, because of how popular it is and how known it is. Uh, but I just wanted to get that out of the way that I have the utmost respect for it, but it ain't on my list. Uh, that said, uh, my number four is the Dawn of the Dead remake 
Ooh, yeah, the remake. Why would he say that? I don't know. Well, I expected um, you <laughs> after that diatribe to to say the '90s remake of Night of the Living Dead was on your list instead. <laughs> what a fucking subversion to then just be like, it's Dawn of the Dead remake. I fucking love this movie. I I like the original Dawn of the Dead enough. I own it, but it's it's real boring at and at that middle point. And it gets way like it's just too boring for me in the middle. Um so the remake is pretty much keeps the pace the whole movie. Uh so that's that's kind of why I prefer it. Uh, same same setting, just executed a little bit differently, and uh, mm. I feel like the effects are we he used a lot of practical effects, and the practical effects um, had grown since the original was made. So it, I think it looks better too. Um, it's just it's and for pure entertainment, I, I'd watch that over the original any day. Mm, well, Jay just buried a dagger into my fucking heart. <laughs> I I don't care for the remake. I don't like uh I I don't like action packed zombie films. Oh, I do. I like my zombies to be, you know, like slow and dumb and full of cum. Just like I don't I don't <laughs> like them fucking running. I don't like them being like super sh- like fucking throwing punches like they're fucking zombie Muhammad Ali. Like I just don't dig that. Uh, thing about the Dawn remake is I really like it. Um, it's very entertaining. It's a good action horror film. There's no real social commentary if you want to pull that out of it. And unlike Romero's films that get better with age and change over time, the Dawn of the Remake loses steps every every day. Every day, it's in the world. It gets worse. To I me. Will Even though I this. love it, it just it doesn't hold up like the other ones. In honor, it, I will defend Jay here. Jay fucking loves like action movies. So it does not surprise me that an action version of Dawn of the Dead that the the remake is is on his list because that's just his cup of tea. He fucking loves I mean, that stuff. It's a good movie. I'm not arguing it. Like I like yeah. it a lot. It's just not what I look for. You know, I like that stuff, but it's just when you compare it to the original. I mean, okay, it, for me let personally, me, let me throw this out there, and it's either gonna make it dislike me more, or maybe redeem myself a little bit. Um, Day of the Dead is my favorite of the original trilogy, and I have not liked a single remake that those have done. So those remakes are unwatchable. Better. Those are unwatchable <laughs> movies. Those are cash ins. Those are those are like the embarrassing remakes. They're not even like, hey, we tried something new. We might have failed. We might have succeeded. They're like, hey, I, I got the name of Day of the Dead. What do you want to do? I don't know. Let's just shit this piece of crap out. Those are bottom <laughs> of the barrel trash, man. Like, I, in fact, if you if you put your name on that movie, you you are a disservice as a filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, that's all. I mean, and I don't mind remakes. Those are just taste. They're cashless. Yeah, they're, they're, cash they're garbage. They're not, mm-hmm. they're not real movies. Yeah, Day of the Dead remake. People, come fucking fight us. <laughs> <laughs> I will get a, get all the <laughs> up in this. Uh, <laughs> no, I like Ule Bull's movies better. Wow. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. You know what? Wow. All right, we're getting ridiculous <laughs> well, we can, here. Uh, yeah. Venom. No, those Day of the Dead remakes are that bad. They're that bad. Holy shit. We Venom. Talk about Evil. I like Evil. <laughs> Venom, what is your number four? All right, my number four zombie film is uh, we're going to start getting into more serious zombie stuff now. A little bit less on the comedy side. And it's it's a more recent one. It's actually the newest film on this list. It's one that we discussed offline a little bit. <clears throat> in 37 years of watching zombie movies, and that basically that time is between the very first time I saw Night of the Living Dead at nine years old until I saw this film on its new release. No zombie film ever made me feel the emotions that this one did. And I am an emotional guy. I actually, I like when movies make me feel something. I like when horror movies make characters likable so that I actually feel something when they're taken away from us, not just, you know, guilty pleasure fodder for the killer to cut into pieces. So I actually like when I care about my characters and I care about, you know, the actions in the film. So it's probably fairly obvious this one's coming to us from South Korea. It is Train to Busan. It is a movie yeah. that I've seen at least three dozen times, and the end still gets me. That little girl screaming for her father gets me every fucking time. So, yeah, um, I will absolutely die on this hill. Potentially one of the most emotional zombie movies ever put out there, Train to Busan. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's fucking amazing movie. Great film. 
Yeah, like, I, I agree. Train to Busan is one of the few like action based zombies that um, I really enjoyed the film because it had a good fucking story to hold mm. it up. Tearjerker too, big time tearjerker. Yeah, I can't wait for Train to Busan two. Marley and me. <laughs> they did, they did they have did two. a train to was on too and it's not very good yeah i liked it i'm like the only one in the world that liked it it's just uh it's just like they took the bits from romero's original day of the dead script and parts of land of the dead and were like we're making a new movie it they just like took it, it seriously and mixed it, it, it felt like that. mixed it with yeah. fast and the furious yeah i yeah. was about to say <laughs> interesting uh, the sequel the cartoon sequel the animated sequel is abysmal it's just ham-fisted it's oh, literally talking station. about the whole yeah. it's talking about the horrors of capitalism, but there's like Pizza Hut signs in the background of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> hey, Pizza Hut in the background worked for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games. Uh, it was like I, I was like, is this a parody? Is this fucking Wayne's World over here? <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of parody, Dave, what is your number four? Uh, again, like I said, traditionalist, um, they're dead. They're all messed up. Groundbreaking night of the living dead. Like I said, I could have went, I can't like these movies are so near and dear to me. They're literally my favorite movies. So I can't be like, well, I want to throw something different. And if it would have been slashers, I would have, right. I made like, I might leave one this wall off, but for, for zombie movies, I have to go night of the living dead. It bro, it changed everything. Romero's background and me and like media and news stuff just worked well with his editing. It just fit perfect. It was the right place, right time, lightning in a bottle helped change the landscape of modern horror nihilism you know into the 70s which were dark and the vietnam war it's just perfect it was uh it's one of the rare i'd say like three or four horror movies that changed the landscape into like a lightning in a bottle kind of thing like night of the living dead text chainsaw massacre evil dead but then you also have that nihilism that carried on through last house on the left so it's just an amazing movie so god he just like named all like my favorite movies in a row no, those are like lightning in a bo- Those are movies like they just were the right place, the right time, geographically, regional horror films, and they're all like perfect in their own way. I, I agree with you. I did a, like a fucking three hour show, me, Kenneth, and Watson on uh, The Last House on the Left, and I went and broke down like all this fucking social commentary in it and shit. So I agree. All these people that are like, that movie, it sucks. It's just a shitty rape film. I'm like, bro, pay the fuck attention to this movie. It is showing you some shit if you will, like, think just a tiny bit about, and, like, when it came out. And David Hess is wonderful in that movie. He's so terrifying. Mm-hmm. And he's the best baddie of all time, for my money. He's just something about him. He's just... Oh, oh yeah. Anytime David sick. Hess is involved, it's like, fucking, oh, this is going to be grimy. <laughs> he's got the great face, too. Oh, my God, yes. Um. All right. With that being said, my number four... Uh, I had I debated on this one a little bit because when you talk about what is a zombie film, there's, you know, you can go back to where a zombie film was like white zombie, where it was voodoo or mind control and you were just a mindless being under, you know, someone's control, you know. Um, and we talked about it in the group chat because when I looked up like top 10 favorite zombie films to kind of see what you know, the big list say a lot of people were saying like fucking the evil dead movies. The evil dead movies are not zombie movies. Those are demon possession movies. They are not a zombie film. So with this one, I had to really sit down and debate in myself. Is this a zombie film? And the reason I decided it was, is because scientists consider when a fungus takes over a living creature it makes they say it makes it into a zombie so i decided that this movie counts because it is an alien turning people into zombies and that is a night of the creeps oh i thought you were going a different direction damn what did you think i was gonna say i thought you were going invasion of the body snatchers no no i wouldn't i don't know if that because that's like cloning in a way I guess, but I can see where you're going with that. But no, Night of the Creeps. I 100% think that that counts as a zombie movie because the aliens are bringing, uh, even though they stole the idea from Plan 9 from Outer Space, I'm not going to try to hide shit. <laughs> you know, they did. Uh, but who wouldn't want to steal from the great Ed Wood? Um, Night of the Creeps is is a f- super fun movie. It's It's serious while also being funny, it has great fucking characters. It is supremely well written. 
And it is just one of the, for, for me, it's even more entertaining than Return of the Living Dead. Uh, I, I love this movie. I love the idea of aliens and zombies mixing together. It is the only way that you could have made Plan 9 from Outer Space into an actual, like, good fucking movie. And if the 80s was known for anything, it was known for remaking movies from the 1950s into masterpieces. No doubt. What? <laughs> no doubt. Oh, I love Night of the Creeps. It's one of my all-time favorite movies, too. Oh, I thought you were saying, oh, no. No, I said no doubt when you said the oh. 80s to the 50s. Yeah, the 50s and 80s are, like, hand in hand. Oh, yeah. Dude, like, you look at the fucking movies from, like, the 50s that got remade in the 80s, and it's, like, they're masterpieces. They fucking are. And I think Night of the Creeps is, like, an unofficial fucking remake of Plan 9 from Outer Space. So, I'm okay with that. I yeah. would like some. I would like confirmation on that. Let's go ask the guy. Who? <laughs> Fred Decker. Fred Decker. Fred Decker <laughs> would probably like 100% be like, "Yes, I love Play Nine from Outer Space. I actually wrote it on one of the tiles in the bathrooms. You just didn't notice it." <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Jay, we come to round three. What do you got? Um, where's my list? Did it go? Oh yeah. Um, so. Part of the, why this movie is on my list is a little superficial. Uh, I went to go see this movie with an older girl I had a huge crush on when I was right out of high school, and she took me on like a pity date. God bless her heart. <laughs> like, this no is joke. I thought this was going to turn into like <laughs> when I went and saw Fear.com in theaters and got a blowjob, and so like I love that oh, movie. I, I wish that's how it ended, but no, she was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, uh, but otherwise, I, I love this movie. Um, uh, 28 Days Later, I'm rambling now. Uh, I am losing my train of thought, and I completely apologize. Is it because uh, you're I thinking just... of that girl? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. What bra size uh, does she have, Jay? Tell us, you know. <laughs> no, I don't know her bra size. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say something about this goddamn. <laughs> and how good it is. Uh, Venom, how do you feel about 28 Days Later? <laughs> I actually love 28 Days Later. I think it's a great film. I've, I've always kind of gone back and forth on whether it's a, a quote unquote zombie movie. I don't think this is the forum for that discussion, but oh, if you I'll call die it a zombie movie, that it's a zombie movie. Yeah, that's what I mean. If, if you call it a zombie movie, I'm not going to argue with you. I, I'm very okay with that. That's fine. I, I myself personally have a very specific definition of a is, zombie. Is it one of those – because I've seen it. I don't remember. Is it one of those arguments where, like, it's a virus, not zombie? Exactly. Thing? Well, they're not dead. People yeah, they're think not the dead. zombies should be dead, um, which makes sense. I, I don't like to argue it because it's been argued to death, and everyone just has their own opinion about it, and that's fine with me. I don't care either way. I'm tired of arguing it. <laughs> you know, I actually want to ask this question. It's I'm interrupting, but I don't care. Uh, I was seeing arguments over the movie Wreck that some people were saying it was zombie. Some people were saying it was uh, possession. No, that's zombies. In Rec 2, they do bring a kind of possession angle because they talk about the Vatican Church and they talk about uh, potentially patient zero wasn't it wasn't actually a virus that she was just possessed, but that somehow she was able to transfer her possession to other people through, you know, saliva and blood. It, it's it's kind of a throwaway line. I'm not going to call it specific canon, but it is brought up in the second film. Huh. I, I I, I, I'm I'm still okay calling it a zombie movie. It's in my honorable mentions, so I mean I I consider it a zombie movie. Yeah, it was on my list. It got bumped off, but like I I was just like I saw that argument and the 28 days later thing made me think about it because um is 28 days later where the term rage zombie came up or was that the crazies? No, that was that was 28 days. The rage monkey. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. a rage. I, I, yeah, it is funny that people say monkeys. that. 28 days later is like, oh, they weren't doing that before. It's like, what about wait, the crazies? What about Return of the Dead? What about Nightmare City? No, wait, Fuck what off. about Dead Alive? Because Dead Alive is, con I saw that in all the zombie <laughs> lists. And that's a monkey. Uh, what we're, we're getting Dead what Alive. Is that? The Samaritan monkey? I can't think of the fucking yeah. name. Uh, yeah. Sumatran. Sumatran, Sumatran. Yeah. monkey. 
Sangaya. So does that count? Like I, it, I think that should count. At, like I, because the people do die. Come, okay. So yes. I think the basis for me to at least say it's a zombie is they have to die or be dead and come back to life. Whether it's, yeah. it's, but it cannot be by supernatural religious possession. I will put that asterisk there because if someone keeps trying to push Evil Dead on me as a zombie film, I am <laughs> going to dropkick them. And that will hurt me more than it will hurt them, but it will be worth it. Well, you also take into consideration. Picture you like, drop kicking somebody, and it just being completely ineffective. Like they're just like like you just hit connect and then fall to the ground. Have you, have you seen? Yeah, they're still standing. Them. Have you seen that video of Shaggy Two Dope trying to jump and drop kick Limp, uh, Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit while they're playing on stage <laughs> in the back, and he just completely misses? No. <laughs> Watch that video, and that is exactly what would happen. If me drop kicking someone who says Evil Dead is a zombie film. Oh, uh, that's funny. Okay, back on topic. Jay chose 28 Days Later. Yeah. Asterisk, it may I, or may not be a zombie film. We did I not figure that out. Film. We went on tangents. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Vidup, what is your number three choice? Uh, well, I'm I'm starting to feel like uh, it, it's kind of cosmic, like the universe is aligning because we just brought up my number three zombie film, and that is Dead Alive. Oh, I nice. fucking love Dead Alive. I, I, I've been a fan of this since it first came out. I remember seeing a bootleg VHS from the guy at an incredibly strange video in Pittsburgh uh, playing me a, like a, like I said, a bootleg VHS of it. I absolutely fell in love with it. I watched it twice this week. Definitely not my intention. I, I obviously I was gonna watch rewatch it for the show, but. I just loved it so much. I had to watch it again. Every single scene is just pure joy. It is, it is joyously violent. It is gleefully gory. I, I can't say enough good things about Dead Alive. It's smart. It, it has, you know, some fairly smart writing, good characters, hateable characters, you know. Oh, my God. Um, she's so hot. Oh, wait, Ooh. Nikita or mom? The mom. <laughs> oh, okay. Mother. Mom after the transformation. is. Uh, yeah, after the transformation. Up. So fucking hot. <laughs> but literally, as I'm watching it this week, every single scene, like, like there's not a throwaway scene in this entire film. And you don't have to wait long. I mean, mom gets bitten by the Sumatran rat monkey fairly quickly. Plus, you know, you get that great cold open on, you know, the island where the monkey comes from, where they kill the explorer guy. I, yeah, I, I absolutely adore this film. Uh, every second of it is pure joy for me. Ear to ear grin from beginning to end when I'm watching this. You know, people talk about like, oh, people were throwing up in the movie theater while watching Terrifier 2. No, people were throwing up watching the fucking pudding scene in Ugh. Dead Alive. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best scene is that guy's so good even in the background later he's fucking hilarious when they're at the, his mom's funeral he's like but we just saw yesterday perfect perfect picture of health you're like what are you talking about <laughs> fucking not paying attention to anything the whole movie it's because all he cared about was that fucking pudding it's what so we good. need is another war <laughs> oh my god uh perfect fucking choice that i'm uh <laughs> dave what is your number three uh, you know, I couldn't not have Return of the Link Dead on this list. It's, like I said, second or third favorite movie ever made. Uh, it's a rare movie that plays on a previously established film, by, but ends up making them both better for it. So in this world, obviously, Night of the Living Dead had happened, and, but they changed all the facts around. So that is just a brilliantly playing on Night of the Living Dead, and it somehow makes the mythology of both movies richer. It's endlessly quotable. It's very clever. It's got an amazing cast. Um, it literally, to me, is the most quotable film ever made. It has the right soundtrack and score in every, every bit of it. It has an EC style comics with the zombies that is just lovely. It's also very cynical, the ending, but very funny. Uh, just little tiny moments too within the characters that is wonderful. Um, just for a fact that Bert, Bert and like Ernie's relationship and Frank and Freddie's relationship, uh, they're just lovely moments in there. And, and I just my favorite little kind of moment that people don't really talk about besides the obvious ones is when uh, Bert's ready to run out there and get to the car with Spider, and Ernie says, "You know that favor you owe me." 
He's like, watch your ass out there. And Bert gives him like that kind of half smirk, like it's a joke. And then Ernie just gives him like a wide eye, like, no, man, I'm fucking serious. And he just like goes straight faced. That's just a really nice little character touch. The movie has a lot of them. And oh, yeah. You, you, do, you only get that with character actors. You know what I mean? You don't get that with like your supermodels and your fucking uh, toothpaste commercial fucking actors. You get it with character actors. I agree. It has my favorite quote ever, which is those damn enchiladas. Um, <laughs> oh, fuck. That's the wrong movie. <laughs> Same guy, uh, wrong movie. Good, right after. Two of those. T- yeah, Miguel Nunez. Two two alumni from Friday the 13th Part 5 end up in Return of the Dead. Correct. Suicide and Spider. Um, I absolutely, obviously it was it was my number five. I love it. I, mean, I love the point, the fact that you said they're EC style zombies. Because that is probably one of the reasons why they're kind of my favorite zombies. Is because of yeah. that. Also, like, I, I do love the fact that they bring in the original Night of the Living Dead as if it is a real thing. That only just happened in like that one town, except like in Night of the Living Dead is happening everywhere. Uh, it's brilliant. It, it kind of crosses the line of did it happen or did it not happen in this movie? It, it's really fucking good. Um, and it's also meta too, right? Oh, yeah, way before yeah. everybody says Scream's the only meta movie. It's like there's hundreds, man. I think like William Castle was meta, bro. Chill. Literally, Monster Squad was meta. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. But they said it, obviously. Okay, we get I, it. It's clever. I love the lot. My favorite line at, in that movie, actually, is a zombie on the table that says, I can feel myself rotting. Ah, uh, rotting. Yeah. That to be is dead. so good. And, Those and, are like death metal lyrics. Do yeah, I feel like myself rotting. <laughs> I feel myself I, rotting. I, I would. You could have a next song called "Hurts to Be Dead." Yeah, <laughs> I would never <laughs> want. Yeah, send more paramedics. I would never. Realistically, I would never want my zombies talking, but it works so well in that movie. Yeah, it does. Oh, okay. Uh, my number three. I do not expect this movie on anyone's list. I don't, whatsoever. But. I, I double featured this with Train to Busan one day when I, it was my first time watching both of these. And I liked this so much better than Train to Busan. And it is another Asian zombie film. And before you ask, no, it is not Toilet of the Dead. No, it is not Tokyo Zombie. It is One Cut of the Dead. I fucking love this movie. I think it is one of the most original films fucking ideas for a zombie movie ever to be filming a zombie movie and a zombies like actually show up like it is it is shadow of the vampire like for zombie movies it, it it's hilarious uh it's one of the most unique filmed movies fucking ever holy shit it is crazy like to know like them doing all those fucking one shots is insane. Uh so I fell in love with this movie so fucking hardcore. And it technically is it really is my third favorite zombie film of all time. And it only loses and becomes number 3 because of nostalgia for one movie and historical importance of the other movie. Which kind of gives you a hint of what's coming up for me. But I love One Cut of the Dead. If someone here does not love One Cut of the Dead, please let me know because I will edit it out of this episode. Not me. I will edit you saying you don't like it out. I've never seen it. One Cut of the Dead is amazing. Amazing film. uh, Duncan McLeish actually turned me on to that. And I bought it sight unseen because he gave it a great review. And yeah, it's a spectacular film. I can see the argument for maybe saying it's not a zombie movie, but again, if you call it one, um, it is to- an a, a, a zombie shows up. It is uh, an actual zombie. We'll go with that. Okay. How is it not a zombie <laughs> film? I mean, it's, it's cute and clever too. I mean, it's very fun. Like yeah. the first act, you're like, this is okay. Low budget zombie movie. Second act, you're like, what the fuck? And third act, you're like, Oh, it all comes together pretty well. So I, I, I mean, it's very enjoyable. Yeah, the third act is definitely its strong suit. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the you know, the first half hour of it is cool. It's kind of, you know, yeah. color by numbers. But that third act is spectacular. It makes the movie what it is. So I'm yeah. right there with Jerry. It's a spectacular film. It's so, it, it, it just, it just flips it. All, like, Asian cinema has a really good job of, like, 
where something is kind of like basic and then it's like holy shit you know it's it's like watching audition for the first time and you're like oh this is a lovely romance movie and then it's like tiki 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 and you're like what the fuck <laughs> um or like tetsuo where you're like oh this is just a revenge tale is this a gay love story <laughs> like, exactly <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> Which, by the way, Jay, you can, uh, Joe Bob did One Cut of the Dead. You can watch his version. Oh, nice. Uh, you can also watch his version of Tetsu with the Iron Man. I have that DVD somewhere. Oh, it's so fucking good. Uh, probably my favorite art film of all time. It's a masterpiece. Agreed. All right, so now we go into number two. Jay, what do you got? Number two. Oh, and now it's my turn to talk about Return of the Living uh, Dead. Uh, uh, <laughs> <perfect>. <laughs> I, I... I, what do I say that you guys haven't already said? It's fucking fantastic. It's hilarious. Uh, the effects are amazing. Uh, it's a great zombie story. Um, it's it's a pseudo sequel to Night of the Living Dead. Like it's it's there's yeah, it's great, and I fucking love it. Perfect. Uh, Venom, what do you got for number two? All right, number two is a repeat from earlier. I think it was Dave's number five. Somebody's number five, but this is Lucio Fulci's Zombie. I mean, it's my number two only because I put my number one maybe half a step above it, more for its social commentary than anything else. But Zombie, I, I, I got to give my props to Fulci and Italian zombie movies in general. They had a style that was unique. It was all their own. Their zombies were, you know, they had a very specific look. Uh that, you know, they could be picked out from like, you know, Romero zombies or Americanized zombies, if you will. I, I, I mean, it's got a great story, beautiful performances, you know, Tissa Farrow, Ian McCullough, uh, yeah, McCulloch, McCulloch, um, Richard Johnson, just some great performances, a great story. I've, I always like the Italian formula of starting, you know, uh, movies in New York and then moving them over to the jungle is kind of a, a formula that they use, but I actually really did enjoy it. And the final shot of this movie, I actually absolutely love. I know a lot of people complain about the fact that there's still everyday traffic uh, going up and down the Brooklyn Bridge, but I, I like it more because of it, because that shot, that singular shot, shows the dichotomy of New York and just what's about to happen. All these people that are just driving to work, completely clueless as to what's about to happen to them. I love that dichotomy. So yeah, Lucio Fulci zombie is easily my number two. Perfect. Dave, what do you got for number two? I mean, come on. How could this movie not be on the list? Ain't it a crime? The only person who can miss with this gun would be the sucker with the bread to buy it. Dawn of the Dead, man. It's the movie to put against all zombie movies. Every zombie movie is measured to Dawn of the Dead 78. I'm talking the yep. theatrical cut. There's a lot of people out there watching for this for the first time, watching the red edition, which is all of it spliced together, which is kind of sloppily edited. And they're like, I don't like that. No shit. You're watching the worst version. <laughs> You don't even know what you're going on. So, like, no, this movie's a masterpiece, social commentary and all. It's also vastly entertaining. It's an action movie. It's a horror movie. It's a drama. It's a comedy. It is everything. It is the ultimate zombie epic. Any movie where you witness someone having a nightmare and they wake up into the world of Dawn of the Dead, is it's clever right from frame one, yeah. right? Um, the way that they show characters spit racism is realistic, and it it—, it I've seen it like that happen exactly like that. And people usually keep their mouth shut. They're just like shocked and they just don't want to deal with it. And it's the people in these upset emotional states and stuff saying stuff like that. It's just perfect. It's a perfect film. I know that some people complain about the special effects, but I mean, if you're getting that upset about those, the movie had already lost you. Uh, I, I think it's a brilliant movie. I love all the performances, uh, especially the newscaster stuff. It's just terrifying. It somehow grounds it and makes it real. We are down to the line, folks. Down to the line. That's also a brilliantly edited scene with Roger rising and uh, Millard Roush talking. It's just, it really is all over, isn't it? Boom. It's perfect. The whole thing's great. It, it's way more, and the guerrilla style editing at the end is just amazing. With the, the shots, boom, fast cuts, boom, boom, boom. The action never stops. It feels like you're in war. Which which cut do you like better, the the Romero or the Argento? Uh, Argento cut is the worst cut, but the red cut's the worst because that's a, a a bootleg cut. It just takes all it takes the extended cut, then and then it adds in the stuff from the Euro cut, and it's just the music doesn't flow right. Kind of like the Cabal cut of Nightbreed, it just doesn't sound right. It's just off. Yeah. So uh, the my personal favorite cut for years was the extended cut because I like to watch it more. But I think the superior cut is the theatrical. George Romero cut. It's just a little bit more fast paced, has a little bit more goblin music in it. It's just the better cut. 
I agree. Uh, Dawn of the Dead is absolutely a classic. I, I, I do like it. It's uh, it's just a great sequel because instead, like anything that builds in the world, and that's one thing that I think a lot of sequels do wrong is they're like, w- w- if you don't have the same characters. All you need to do is make a great movie set in the same world that expands upon the lore and gives us good characters and a good story and is entertaining. So many movies like cash in on a sequel or a name, but they don't really do any of that. And Dawn of the Dead is such a great example of how to do a fucking sequel right. Interesting way to do sequel too, because he they reflect the time they're made. They don't reflect the time of the original sequel. So the technology within Dawn of the Dead in '78 is the technology within that movie, right? It's not '68 when the original outbreak would have happened. You know, it's a strange way to do a series, and people don't really think of that either. They don't I, really comprehend that. I never thought about that until you just said it right now. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that being said, mine is, of course, one that's not been on anyone's list uh, because I am very unique. It is Lucio Fulci Zombie. Um, I was expecting something off the rails. uh, It it is uh, Zombie Flesh Eaters from the UK. Uh, No one's had Zombie Flesh Eaters on their list. Um, Yeah, it's it's Lucio Fulci Zombie 2. It has the shark scene... It's got the fucking eyeball scene. It's got the zombie rising out of the dirt scene. It's got the fucking tell them they can get on the boat now. Fucking shoot them in the head scene. I just have so much nostalgia to this fucking movie. Kenneth showed it to me on VHS and I have that VHS sitting in my closet right now. I've kept it. I will never get rid of it because like that movie, that movie and Cannibal Holocaust make me think of Kenneth because Kenneth was the first one to kind of show me like Italian horror. And even though I've now gone so far past him in Italian horror and I love giallos and shit, but like, I, I just oh, shit, fucking, sorry. Oh, you're good. You sneeze when I'm, you know, talking about my, my memories with my cherished best friend about, you know, a horror maestro, if you will, <laughs> uh, with Lucio Fulci. And you just want to rudely, sneeze because you don't have control over your bodily functions like a fucking adult of um i couldn't get to the mute button fast enough you hold that shit in oh uh, so yeah it's fucking zombie what i mean i fu- i just i fucking love it so with that being said we are moving into the number ones uh also point out me and venom both named jerry had Lucio Fulci Zombie as number two. We're great we're minds. Blah, in blah, blah, sync. Blah. <laughs> uh, I'm Justin Timberlake. He's Lance Bass. I can't think of another name for oh, that. Oh, thank you. If if you call me Joey Fatone, I was gonna slap you through the internet. <laughs> no, out of this group, uh, Jay is the Joey for Tone for fucking sneezing <laughs> during my heartfelt memories. Uh. Um, yeah, so, uh, Jay, uh, please tell us your number one. Okay, so... Sneeze! <laughs> yes. Yeah, Sorry, I sneezed. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm done running that joke into the ground. Uh, my number one is the remake, yeah, of, uh, Night of the Living Dead. Uh, I saw the remake before I saw the original... Uh, I didn't really see the original until I was an adult. Um, and so that kind of drove my love. But since it was one of the first zombie movies I've seen, um, it, it's always just been really impactful on me. Uh, and I also, because I have no, again, I recognize its cultural significance and its historical significance. And I'm I'm not in the debate. I'll probably talk its praises all day long. Um but on my personal entertainment level, I feel like everything in the remake is better. Uh, Barbara's a way more interesting character who doesn't spend half the movie screaming like an idiot. Um, the effects are better because we had better technology and Savini was in charge of them. Uh, I just I just find it way more entertaining as a movie than the original. I mean, it does have Tony Todd in it. 
Tony Todd's fucking amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I love the movie yeah. too. Tom Tolls is is definitely an improvement, big time, on Cooper. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can't really can't, can't fault you for that one. I like it. Uh, Venom, what is your number one? Uh, well, my number one's one that's already been discussed. It was Dave's number two. It is, of course, Dawn of the Dead, 1978. No zombie movie comes close to everything that this movie does for me. Between its gore, its interesting characters, its a multitude of social commentary. I mean, you're looking at stuff like racism and classism early on in the film, but then later on, it's it's more about consumerism and capitalism. And it's almost like the tale of two movies. You almost get two movies in one, one that takes place in a city, one that takes place in a mall, you know, slightly outside of the city. So, you know, it, it's just, it's always spoken to me. Uh, I enjoy all versions. I prefer the Romero cut, of course, as I think most of us do. I still will throw on the um, the Dario's cut every now and again, just to get, get a couple of those extra scenes that he threw in there. There's one extra scene with the baseball player zombie that I always kind of liked in the Argento cut. Um, no gore, nothing, just kind of a shot of him sitting there uh, looking at our female protagonist through the glass that is not in the Romero version, but it, it's, it's a in minor the extended scene. cut. Is it in the extended? Okay, good, good. I sometimes I forget which cuts I watch half the time. It's probably yeah. in all of them except Romero's cut, right? Um, yeah, it's definitely not in Romero's cut. That's the one that I rewatched this week. So, but so ultimately, why I, does Romero hate baseball players? What is his beef <laughs> with the Warriors? Why is he sending shots to the baseball gang and the Warriors? Someone dig up his grave. Let's find this out. He kills the <laughs> baseball the boy in uh, what do you call it in uh, Doctor Sleep. <laughs> yeah that's the worst one that holy shit that scene is hardcore <laughs> that's rough yeah it is yeah yeah, yeah the Steve, stephen king definitely has a thing against baseball all right so uh dave what is your number one you know it hasn't been mentioned and i know i am the minority here but uh my favorite movie of all time my favorite zombie movie my favorite romero movie and i do not think it is the best historically or anything like that it's my personal favorite and i think it's the best movie but you know it's day of the dead uh 85 i think the effects are unmatched but i don't love it just for the effects i love it for the characters and it's kind of romero 101 it's everything in here it's got all the mental illness that he has throughout the miscommunication throughout his entire film career night of the living dead miscommunication martin crazies all this mental illness and miscommunication and not understanding each other it kind of boils over in day of the dead it's also he gives his little characters his minor characters moments to shine which other people wouldn't do for villains um like Rhodes, like I said, he genuinely feels bad when he has to shoot Miller. And there's has that moment where he, he gives that look in his eye. And you're like, why would you do that for a goon? And you're like, oh, because it makes him more de- well-rounded. And, and rarely do they do that with side characters. And also it's ungodly interesting watching the series as the female lead and the African-American lead in all the films change throughout. In the original night, we have Barbara. She's like comatose. She's completely useless, reflecting even a time before the 60s she's like from the 50s right and then dawn you get fran and fran's more kind of normal more somebody is kind of taking charge throughout the middle of the movie and by the time you get to day sarah is she's smart she's intelligent she's intelligent she's tough and she's like she has everything and she's compassionate and she's a badass and this is a year before aliens so everybody always jumps on ripley even though it was aliens of 79 she wasn't the ripley that we know from aliens you know i think sarah is the most realistic heroine the toughest and just overall Great. And an underrated score as well. It, it plays with the military and kind of the kind of like um, almost like Calypso kind of theme music that like the Florida like Caribbean shit. That's like a mixture and it just fits. It's like almost like made for like a play, right, where people have their motifs and shit. It's actually a much better, more clever film than people give it credit for. I know some people will say it's talky, but uh, I, I love it. And I also love the, the, the continuation of the zombies learning. There's all this stuff that was planted in the previous two films that comes to a fruition in Day of the Dead. So I love it. I'm so glad someone brought up Day of the Dead so I can say this. <laughs> oh, get fucking right. Actually, uh, my problem with Day of the Dead is that, God, I wish that was a TV series done by, like, HBO in the 19th, uh, like, fucking uh, 80s. Like, can you think of how great that would have been if Romero would have been able to expand 
on the ideas that are in Day of the Dead because Day of the Dead for me the original script is quite great yeah that uh, the, the, there are such great fucking ideas in that movie that they don't have the time to fully explore and if you really sit down and go man if this would have been like a TV show like The Walking Dead how fucking amazing a even just a one to two season run a, a mini series of day of the dead could have fucking bid had he had gotten to expand it and had longer to be able to draw out these ideas because my only problem with day of the dead is every time i watch it i want more i don't feel well, like it has enough time to capitalize on what it brings to the table well you know the story they had to cut the budget right the original script is probably exactly what you're looking for you should you should check out that original script and if they would have got the budget We'd probably be talking, people would be talking more, even though Day of the Dead's gained popularity over time and become one of the best or more popular ones. If that original script would have got made, I'm pretty sure that we would be putting Dawn and Day on the same level as Epicness because that script was pretty big and it had multiple zombies and multiple training and multiple, all that stuff going on. And there was an underground city. It was like the parts of Land of the Dead that are interesting mixed with Day of the Dead just expanded upon it. So it was a really good script. All right, Hollywood, you fucking cowards. Remake. <laughs> Day of the Dead to the original script to a T. Do not fucking change a single thing. Just remake that. I don't give a fuck if it's a four hour long movie. Put it as a two movie series like it's fucking it chapter one and two and do it. You goddamn cowards. It it would be nice to see somebody with like like I knew Nicotero would be the obvious choice or Savini. But I'm not. I don't love the the Walking Dead where it went. But that's more of a script thing, not a direction thing for me. Um, I would like to see like Del Toro do it. Can you imagine how he would handle zombies? <laughs> you know what? I, I if Del Toro did it, I'd want him to do his own original thing because I, I think he'd be more of a zombie remake. Can you imagine him remaking zombies? Yeah, let him remake remake Fulci Zombie because if I because if I want Day of the Dead remade based off the original script, I want it done to be a Nicotero, right? Yeah, I want it done to a T. Don't change shit. I agree. I agree. It'd have to be reflect the eighties too, which would be weird. Yes, it is. It is set in the eighties. You're gonna do it like that. Sit the fuck down and do your job, and don't give me any lip. Yeah. Um. Okay. My number one is the original Night of the Living Dead. Uh, not just because of its historical importance. Importance. I fucking love this movie. I think it holds up super well. I think it's super entertaining. Uh, yes, Barbara is slightly annoying, but she's playing that character to a fucking T. The subversion of having, you know, you think you're going to be this white woman as your main character, and instead, bam, it's the black dude. He's the main guy, and he's not playing the uh, fucking, like, I'm the black person that saves the white person. No, he's like, yo, bitch, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to, like, survive. I don't care what anyone else in this house says. I'm trying to survive. Um, But he knows he's got to work with people and he works with people. Anyway, everyone's seen Night of the Living Dead. I, I do believe Jay is right when he says, you know, everyone's seen this movie. Everyone talks about it. But I made my list based on my favorites and i i fucking just love night of the living dead i can watch it over and over and over uh one everyone knows i have a huge heart on for black and white cinema i love classic black and white cinema it, it's my favorite thing i have spent this past like week re-watching all the basil rathbone sherlock holmes movies from the 1980s i just re-watched the uh 1940s cat and the canary and a few other uh black and white movies um like the original tower of london with basil rathbone also so i just i love black and white movies so that also gives it a huge plus in my book i just oh fucking mm, hard on i love it so and also the pittsburgh quality man can't underestimate that pittsburgh quality I don't know anything about Pittsburgh, but, you know, they're A-OK in my book, you know. Just the I, way it, it feels and looks, right? I like Pittsburgh. Yeah, I went to college in Pittsburgh. Just because of that movie. Just like I like Cleveland because I unabashedly love the Drew Carey show. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. The Drew Carey show was fucking good. 
And it was funny. If you don't like stuff. the Drew Carey show, it's just because you were mad at how many shots they took at Polly Shore during season one. Okay? <laughs> what? Biodome isn't a good I... movie. I'm sorry. Fucking deal with it. Anyway. I, like <laughs> I don't think anybody, even if you like Biodome, is going to die on the hill for Biodome. No, I won't die on a hill for it, but I think it's funny. Well, I would watch it. That's all I'll leave it at. <laughs> I would watch it again. We can dance to tomorrow. Okay. Uh, with that being said, we now get into the debate. Now, the interesting thing about the debate part of this is that that when it comes to the most important historical zombie movie... I don't think there is a debate on what it is. I, I think it has to be the original Night of the Living Dead. I don't think. Does anyone have a historical argument against that? Yeah, it's um no. actually... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's Night of the Living Dead. It's Night of the Living Dead. I mean, yeah, it, it changed everything, man. It changed the zombie face. And there's only like a few movies I could think of that really feel like Night lifted from. Last Man on Earth, Carnival of Souls, and even Planet Night from Outer Space a little bit have some Night of the Living Dead similarities. But besides that, man... He, it was Romero had a nightmare and he based it off I Am Legend, which makes sense why it's like Last Man on Earth because they're based off the same source material, right? Correct. Because the, before that movie, when you were looking at zombies, you were looking at the vampire zombies from Last Man on Earth. You were looking at the yep. alien resurrected zombies from uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Or you were looking at the, like, voodoo zombies from, like, White Zombie or I Walked With a Zombie. I, like, I feel like there's some visuals from, like, Carnival of Souls, too. Like, the, the eeriness and the way it's made and stuff reminds me a bit of that. So, I mean, like, yeah, it's just, like, but it's just perfect. It's the perfect movie in the perfect time. Completely agreed. So, with that being said, now, when looking at a movie with your critical eye, your podcasting, I'm a horror movie critic... Uh, I, what is the best zombie movie ever fucking made? Now, I know Dave, are you going to go up to bat and put Day Against Dawn, or are you going to say Dawn? I have to go with Dawn, even though Day is personally my favorite. It's just I think Dawn has the cultural impact and just the epicness and the widespread appeal in comparison to Day, so I have to go Dawn. Now... Dawn is on my list of because I had this huge thing about how the 70s has the most 10 out of 10 perfect like horror films that no other decade has. And Dawn is on that list. So for me, I'm also saying it's the original Dawn of the Dead. Now, Venom, where do you stand? On a personal level, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you guys, Dawn of the Dead. But in my research, I found that Night of the Living Dead is actually higher rated on most sites. IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, uh, pretty much anywhere that you go, Night of the Living Dead is considered the more critically acclaimed zombie movie. But on a personal level, it's absolutely Dawn. Dawn just checks every box for me. I feel like there's a lot of a uh, looking back and the historical importance of Night creeping into that now don't get me wrong personally i would much rather watch night of the living dead i think night of the living dead is better personally but when i look at it from a i'm being a film critic i have to go yes but dawn of the dead kind of broke through a completely different barrier and its social commentary is more on purpose as to where, let's be honest, Night of Limit Dead, the social commentary, is not as much on purpose. Like Romero has straight up said, a lot of it was, I guess, a subconscious thing. It was not done as on purpose as Dawn of the Dead was. Dawn of the Dead has more thought put into it as a movie. And that's why I think it's Dawn of the Dead. Now, Jay, I'm interested in what you actually think is critically the best zombie horror film of all time. I see this is the hardest category for me because it's so hard for me to be in that brain versus my what am I personally entertained by brain, um, which is why I come out of the movie theater so often just going, that was a good movie. Yeah, that that's the reason <laughs> I actually was very much waiting your opinion because on <laughs> whenever we review movies on Kill the Cast, Jay is always the more everyday kind of like, yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was fun. Like he's our like, 
if it was if it's going to capture the mind of just like your everyday average person it's going to get jay not because jay is an everyday average person but because jay has that popcorn film brain he is the person that's going to tell me if this is an actually entertaining movie and it's not me just thinking it's entertaining because i think it's fucking smart and hoity-toity like i look at jay and go jay was this actually entertaining or am i just caught up in metaphors and similes <laughs> i like my hoity toity movies Heredit- hereditary is fucking amazing <laughs> <laughs> i'm right there with you <laughs> um i don't know like i feel like i need to go rewatch dawn of the dead and then come back to this conversation so if you want to give me two and a half hours or whatever the runtime is i'll be right back um and we're back jay what did you think <laughs> yeah <laughs> I wish. Um, it's it's been so long since I've watched Dawn of the Dead. Um, I did not have time to get it into my rewatches to prepare for the show. Um, so I really, I really don't feel like I'm qualified to to weigh in on this. I like day. I like I like Day of the Dead better. I Day of the Dead is my favorite of the trilogy. I think it it flows better. I think everything about it is better for what I find entertaining. Um, but critically, you guys are probably right. I mean, <laughs> you all know more than I do in most cases, uh, especially about this movie. And uh, what you guys have been saying have, has made me want to go watch Dawn of the Dead right now, the original. Well, luckily for you, uh, here at Kill the Cast, we are not a democracy. Uh, we believe in fascism and uh, what I say goes. <laughs> so the winner is Dawn of the Dead. Um, I mean... It, at best, it would have been two versus two, and you know it would have been just an argument. We would never. Oh, would you know? taken up arms with me, brother? <laughs> I would have thought about it, but I, I just can't do it. I mean, I, those are two like those top three movies I love all much. You know, as long as it's one of those three, I'm fine. Now, the most subjective conversation here. We can all be critical. We can all look at history, but when it comes to pure entertainment value. Pure let me eat this fucking popcorn rewatchability. This is the most subjective. So what we're going to do is, without arguing, I'm going to go and ask you what film you think is the most entertaining zombie film of all time. Then, after we've all given our answers, we will see if any of them have the most votes, if we're all at fucking arms and it's a fatal four-way and we have to convince each other. This is going to be... The title match. This is the reason I set this for the end. Because even though it's kind of the most least important uh, from a I'm smart, look at me now point of view, this is the hardest argument. So, with that being said, Jay, what is the most entertaining zombie film of all time? So, and I we're going with entertainment, so I gotta go with my favorite. I gotta go with the remake of Night of the Living Dead. All um, right, Jay's already wrong. Venom! Uh, I... <laughs> You knew I was going to say that, you fucking stupid Friday fucking <laughs> nightmare fucking boy. Um, Venom, what is the most entertaining zombie film of all time? Uh, for me, it's Dead Alive. Dead Alive. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Fuck. Well, you'll be able to switch <laughs> answers after we all put ours out there. Dave, what do you have? Uh, I would say Dave, but I know it's not really going to be there for anyone. So it's clearly the obvious answer, the answer that is just like, Front and every horror fan's face is returned when he's dead. It's the most quotable. People wear shirts everywhere. It has, it, it's just way, has more legs than any of the other ones. And it's the most repeat watching. It's an hour and like 25 minutes. You could watch it six times in one day. And my answer is Return of the Living Dead. I agree with Dave. Ooh. I think it is the easiest to watch because you know what Dead Alive doesn't have? It doesn't have titties. Where's the titties? Agreed. It's, um, I don't need titties. Ooh, you don't need fucking titties? Male, dude. I can go online and find a, a millions of titties right now. Not I don't trash need horror titties. movies to provide my titties. If not you're a 15 year old though. boy, if you're a 15 year old boy and horror movies is the only source of titties for you, fine. Rock on. That's, I'm that's... an adult fucking male. I can get titties anywhere. But if you that, if can if, get gore anywhere Joe. too, though. I mean, you can you can get anything off the internet now. So that's okay, the yes. argument that's okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're stuck on a desert island. You can oh. have the 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 Dawn of the Dead remake, Dead Alive, 
or or Return of the Living Dead. Which one are you taking? Oh, Dawn. Dawn? No, he well, said or... remake. I think he means. I night said remake. remake. I said Dawn of the Dead remake. I said oh, night remakes. remake. Though. Yeah, Nobody's you get Dawn of the Dead Dawn remake, of you get Dead Alive, or you get Return of the Living Dead on a desert island, and that's the only film you're going to be able to watch for the rest of your life. What are you choosing? It's Dead Alive. Really? Return. What are you going to jack yeah, off I... to? The fucking I'm rat not gonna... monkey? I don't need to. What? You're gonna look at coconuts. What the fuck is this argument? I, I don't even understand what's going on here. <laughs> I mean, I mean, nudity. Nudity is not gonna push a movie over. A zombie movie. Jesus, yeah. I thought I was working with adults. What the fuck? Yeah, nudity is not gonna push it over, anyways, right? It doesn't oh, really no. matter. At I'm the end sorry of the day. It really that matter. I'm, 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 I'm look. I'm sorry that I care about <laughs> the necrophilia audience that listens to podcast. Any uh, zombie movie is good for a necrophilia audience. Not if they specifically I, like zombie titties. Yeah, that's uh, true. There are some zombie titties. There is I, I just zombie like titties. It's like if you're a fucking titties. furry, you would pick fucking Howard the Duck because you get duck tits. I, I also Dude, you got to weigh we were, in how good the soundtrack of Return of the Dead is in comparison to Dead Alive. You can barely you remember the Dead Alive. Not even that. Just the, everything. But I'm just saying, like, the Dead Alive soundtrack is good. It has the love theme. There's a love story yeah. in Dead Alive, which Return of the Living Dead doesn't have. I love Dead Alive, but um, it's a tough call. They're both such different comedy pieces. One is like an over, it's the ultimate splatter movie, Dead Alive. Yeah. And one is just the ultimate zombie comedy to me. So it's, it's yeah, really I mean, what I'm you're not looking gonna, for. My heart's not going to be broken if, if Return of the Living Dead wins this, because it's the obvious answer. It's the one that I, yeah. I honestly, I thought it was going to be a sweep. Like, you know, me, yeah. Dead Alive, and the other three of you on Return. Um, but it's just, you know, I, I got to stay true to myself. And I watched yeah. both of them this week. And Dead Alive just gave me so much more joy than Return of the Living Dead did. That's all. I, I, I do see what you're saying with that because, like, there are some really funny fucking things in Dead Alive. I can't argue that. Comedy-wise, yeah, they're very, very different. They're both very yeah. fucking funny. And so I do get that. Okay, so Jay, which, which, would you, which do you side with? You have made some... Really compelling arguments, <laughs> I may say. Um, but I think if I were to, to put both movies up and have it have a choice of only one or the other, I'd probably choose Return of the Living Dead. Is it because of tits? No. Damn it. <laughs> Somebody get Jerry it's a set just... of titties. He's obviously fixated. My girlfriend has double D tits. I love tits. It's it's not. <laughs> As I don't know if I'm gonna say this right, but it's it's like not as quirky. Like brain, dead alive, brain dead. I was gonna say brain dead. Uh, that's, dead that's alive um, is just it's just way more quirky. They're both funny in different ways, but I think for me, it's it's Return of the Living Dead is a is an easier easier watch in its humor, if that makes sense. I also think Paquita is hotter than Linnea Quigley. There, I said it. I'm with you. Wanna marry, you don't want to marry trash. You're not marrying trash. Oh, hell no. You're marrying Paquita, though. <laughs> what do you yeah. mean? Yep. Have you seen my wife? I already married trash. <laughs> what is this? Why do you over here? The fuck? <laughs> uh, okay. So, like I said, I'm a fascist. Um, Return of Living Dead wins because, not because we have the most votes, but because I said so. Um, my dog I mean, just barked. I think so it's two and agreed. a half, right? What? Two and a half versus one and a half is kind of what's going on. <laughs> no, yeah, Jay fully it, agreed. Jay is contractually so. obligated to just agree <laughs> with me, or else he gets kicked off the show. <laughs> it's Terrible. true. I don't bring much to the table. That's I, I hired him <laughs> specifically to do that. Every zombie movie name was good, though. I liked all the. I like all those movies, so. Yeah, I don't. We didn't have a single. Like, I think someone listens to this and they go, if they haven't seen one of the movies, which I haven't seen, the Wormwood, um, Roadhead of the Dead, Zombie Tits Five, I believe it was called. Um, That's one of the rape zombie sequels, probably. Probably Porno rape of the zombie, Dead, Porno Holocaust. What was that one called? An interesting trilogy. Dave, I, I know you know what it's the, called. What is it? What one? The was it Porno Holocaust or Porno of the Dead? What there's is it? There's Porno Holocaust. Porno Holocaust. Porno of the Dead. Then there's Donna of the Dead. But Porno Holocaust is the Joe Diamato flick. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Um. So you you have 
Uh, the answer, uh, tits always win, regardless of Venom acting like a fucking adult. <laughs> <laughs> like he didn't admit to using fucking essential oils to jack off earlier. Yeah, dude, Vaseline's bad for your skin, man. It closes your pores. I didn't use, I didn't say Vaseline, I said lotion. Lotion too, up. I mean, uh, unless you're using like top, top of the line, uh, you know, Nivea lotion or oh, something, you're clogging I your do. pores. I do, I ramen, okay, well, then you're good. the insides, <laughs> oh, don't give a shit. The outsides, oh, that's all top tier, baby. I mean, you, you got to realize I have a lot of tattoos, so I actually know a lot more about skincare than any man should. But I, I care about my tattoos and I want them to look good when I'm old. So I, I've got 40 year old tattoos on me that look, you know, well, maybe not 40, 35 year old tattoos on me that look like they're like three years old. And that's just that's just my I mean, call it what you want. Metrosexuality. I, I, I care about my skin. I call that. Sorry. I call someone that that someone who made an investment and is trying to keep that fucking up. You, you buy a car, you change out the oil. Exactly. <laughs> um, OK, with that being said, um, we're closing out. I don't have to tell you what me and Jay are doing from Kill the Cast because you're listening to Kill the Cast. Uh, but Venom, go ahead. Pimp your stuff. Tell them where they can find you. Are you still doing 20 million podcasts? No, no, I'm only I'm down to one million actually, so oh, oh. a little bit slower. Uh, Good. Actually, in all honesty, I've slowed down to just the No More Room in Hell shows. Uh, I think we've got like five of those now, uh, which includes the main show, No More Room in Hell. Um, our latest episode is episode 51, uh, where uh, Nikki Williams is our guest from the Slumber Party Massacre podcast. We take a look at 1985's House and Martyrs, and if you don't think those two movies go together. Rewatch them both because they absolutely do go together. But and if you I want just to know met why, William go ahead. I saw, I saw house. the picture. Yeah, I made him sign <laughs> Piranha, the '90s Piranha remake, and he said he's never been forced to sign. Ninety-five, right? Uh, yeah, ninety-five. He said I have never been forced to sign anything from this movie in my life ever, and so that's what he wrote on the v- my VHS tape. <laughs> I made him sign. I've never signed anything from this before. It was great. Nice. I had uh, I had that experience recently when I went to Comic Con and I had Ski Ulrich instead of signing Scream like everyone had him sign Scream, I had him sign Operation Takedown and he was like, "Oh yeah, nobody ever brings me this." <laughs> Very good. All right, Venom, continue. I know we have like an hour left of you naming shows. <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, the next show, No More Room in Hell presents Fresh Cuts, is our weekly look at the newest genre releases. Our latest episode looks at the latest theatrical horror release, The Pope's Exorcist. Our next episode will, of course, be looking at Evil Dead Rise, the biggest horror movie in the world right now that everyone is talking about. So check that episode out. We yeah. usually release our episodes on Tuesdays, record on Mondays, release them on Tuesdays. And that's a weekly show. You'll get an episode every week. In fact, you got two episodes last week because there were three horror theatrical releases last week in theaters between The Pope's Exorcist, Renfield, and Nefarious. We went ahead and reviewed two of those, Renfield and The Pope's Exorcist. I also give my extra, uh, during The Pope's Exorcist episode, I give like a quick two-minute review of Nefarious since I was the only one of the three who saw it. Um Okay, No More Room in Hell presents uh, The Crystal Lake Gift Shop is our newest show in the family. It, it is a episode-by-episode episode retrospective of the Friday the 13th series from 1987 to 1990. Uh, of course, the original Friday the 13th series that had nothing to do with the Friday the 13th film franchise, but was still kind of a favorite of mine growing up. So that is, uh, uh, like I said, The Crystal Lake Gift Shop. Uh, we've got three episodes of that one out so far, where obviously we cover one episode per show. And then uh, No More Room in Hell presents Creature Comforts, our creature feature podcast that kind of was born from the death of another podcast that we did with Jerry. Um, that is Don, Don and Nelly, Derek B., and myself looking at all creature features. Our latest episode is episode 16, where we looked at 1990s Tremors with our special guest Brandon Young from the Anatomy of Fear podcast. And uh, that's pretty much it for me. Various guest spots here and there. You can find me at, in a lot of places. But if you're looking for my main stuff, just look up No More Room in Hell. Perfect. Um, Dave, what do you got? Uh, I'll give a couple honorable mentions. I'll be very quick with my, my show. is Mr. Parka on YouTube. I'm also part of 22 Shots. If the show ever comes back, no idea what's going on. 
don't know. But uh, <laughs> Mr. Park on YouTube, one word, no no periods or anything. Uh, yeah, but just throw a couple zombie movies out there that weren't mentioned. Um, Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, uh, Dead and Buried, Shattered Dead, Dead Next Door, all interesting, good stuff. So, yeah, just find me on YouTube, or and all of them are on Spotify as well. Just search Mr. Parker. I'm just glad you didn't say the video dead. <laughs> ha ha! I'm uh, surprised like no it. one brought up Reanimator. Yeah, that's a great one, too. Reanimator is a good one. I, uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't cut it. I mean, yes, it has the, the greatest tits in the game in it. <laughs> And we all know how I love tits. Uh, Barbara Crampton is the hottest women of woman of horror of all time. I don't care what anyone says. I will fucking fist fight you. That round table of the <laughs> dead, hottest woman of all time in horror. Yeah, I'll, Let's go. I'll tell her you said that. Uh, tell her I said it. She's beautiful. I love her to death. I uh, would marry her even if she had like weird German poop fetishes or something. I don't know. <laughs> Um, with that being said, uh, you can check out Kill the Cast everywhere you know because you're already listening to this, but also please check out the Friday Nightmares podcast. And um, yes, Venom, I was waiting to get Kill the Cast back up, a show f- recorded and finally put out. But uh, yes, Venom, let's bring back Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space now that I finally got Kill the Cast fucking recorded and out there. That was all I wanted oh, yeah. to get done. Now that I've got that done, I can work on getting Godzilla, Gamera, and all the other kaiju friends, including Ultraman, back out yes. there. Um, so with that being said, thank you all for listening. Please let me know what you think of this new show style, Roundtable of the Dead, and uh, what topics we should cover. Actually, before we go, uh, Venom, if you could come back to Roundtable of the Dead, what topic would you want to do? Ooh. on the spot um i would i would i would be teetering between two of my favorite z- sub genres uh which would be demonic possession and found footage okay perfect dave what about you that's tough uh do italian horror italian horror very broad subject but i'm down to talk we, about we Mario could get Baba. it smaller too we yeah. you know what, if we ever do one specifically on giallo I would 100%. I'll, I'll make sure I, I, I call you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I love all Italian horror, so. I, I, I would love to do all Italian horror, but that's so fucking broad. It's broad. It's broad. Um, maybe, you know, maybe we could do giallo or some subgenre in Italian horror. Yeah. Uh, there's there's basically giallo and non-giallo. That's the only thing <laughs> Italians make. <laughs> supernatural or non-supernatural? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Jay... <laughs> What do you? Because you'll probably be on future episodes anyway. Uh, I hope so. Maybe not the Italian horror ones. I, that's no, like, I I wouldn't make you come you would on have something. To, you'd basically have to give me a list of movies to watch and then just ask my opinion. On I'm just gonna to give go you around. my list and my answers and just make you say those. Okay, I'll just re- <laughs> I'll rearrange them a little bit. I'll take your top five and I'll just put them in different places. Exactly, uh, Jay. What would you like to do for Roundtable of the Dead? Uh, slashers, of course. Okay, fair. Uh, also, very broad. Maybe I can spe- get that even more specific. Post uh, 80s slashers, 80s slashers. Ooh, I, I'd be real down with that one. Um, proto slashers would be cool. Proto slashers yeah. would be fucking I ballin'. I, um, I would love to do. What do you, okay, real quick before we leave. I have a big. I, I brought this up on our uh, Horror Coliseum Halloween vs. Text Chainsaw Massacre. Um. Halloween does not, it should not be called the first slasher. Uh, calling no. Black Christmas and Texas Chainsaw Massacre proto slashers is bullshit. They are slashers. Black Christmas is 100% a slasher. Texas Chainsaw is, is 100%. tough. Proto slashers like, is like Peeping Tom and Psycho are getting into like giallos and calling like Bay of B- Blood a proto slasher. But like, I don't think I think there's two proto slashers, Peeping Tom, Psycho. Then you got Giallos, and then from that you have literally Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Black Christmas and Halloween as like the first three slashers. Like, but I'm tired of Halloween being called 
the the first slasher. It's fucking no, not. I think yeah. TCM is is more like a hixploitation kind of style horror film. That and Deliverance basically created that subgenre. Right? I I agree, was, but uh, but you're also talking about like a slasher. There's can backward be... slashers though too. Just Ex- before dawn's a backward slasher. That's exactly. Exploitation. Like so it's tough. It, it's so hard to pick, right? I just want to fist fight people. Is what it is. <laughs> but you people just fight that. Jerry needs to go to some MMA classes. He's been wanting to fight everybody. They say things with such a like a like a like a, a dominant factor. Like that is the fight. It's like, dude, just chill. Like, yeah, it's a no. trajectory. It's a very slippery slope. It's I, it's not like that. Yeah, I would say the very first pure slasher movie is Black Christmas. To me, that's what it is. I don't like. That I can one, agree though. with that. <laughs> I, I think Black Christmas is a slasher too. I couldn't argue with it. Yeah. So yeah. okay, I think Bay of the Blood is more slasher than people give credit for though. Too. I I mean, it, Bay of Blood was so good. Friday the Thirteenth had to steal two of its kills. Well, it's just <laughs> part two. Yeah. yeah. It's just right by a lake. <laughs> so, okay. That was a preview of possible further conversations that could happen <laughs> on Roundtable of the Dead. Please come back and check us out. We will now be leaving you 